It seems today that workbenches get all the glory. But in reality, all they are is a base for all your clamps. It's the clamps that actually get a lot of the work done. So that's what we're going to discuss today. How to secure stuff on a basic workbench. So as a point of reference, this is my workbench. It's made out of popper. It's about five inches thick. I actually built 13 of these for a little woodworking school I had open for a little while. And I just kept the smallest one, the worst one of those, and sold all the rest whenever I closed the school down. What's unique about it is all the legs are flush. And this was for the school, but each leg has a spot for a leg vise. So that basically I could teach four people per bench for smaller projects. But in use, I keep one leg vise here, and I keep a what they call a moxin vise, but it's really a small, cheap twin screw made out of southern yellow pine on the end. The rest is dog holes and various ways I hold the work. Now, there's a lot of stuff you do on a workbench that you really don't need any kind of clamp at all. I mean, if I'm chopping out uh, the waist out of a dovetail, well, all my force is going straight down. So all I really have to do is come over, secure it, and I could chop away without any kind of clamping and get the work done. That's completely safe. And there's a lot of carving things that I do that I don't use any kind of clamp whatsoever either. Because if I have enough material, I can use my God-given gravity clamp and carve away all day long. It's not going to do anything. But a lot of times, it's nice to have just one kind of pivot point or brace. And in my these these are all three quarter inch dog holes. I just buy some three quarter inch uh, oak dowels and I put them in there, and I can pop them up that way. If I want to plane something, just make sure it's a little bit lower, and I can come over, grab my plane, and just make sure I'm pushing into the dog, which means I might have to move it over every now and then. But it gets the work done. So if you're just doing really fast stuff, that's all you really need. If I am doing jointing an edge, I can do the same exact thing. I'm pushing straight against it, and this is a round dog. I do know some people that will kind of cut them in half to get a square. Works just fine. A lot of times, that's all you need, and you can get work done really, really quick with just one reference point that you can push against. Now, if you're not wanting to constantly be moving this over, you can't secure it all the way across, especially on thin stuff. I have this board right here, and it's kind of got all these cutouts in it. And a lot of times, you will see me, I will just pop it up. I will pop this up, and this gives me a nice low reference point that, once again, I can plane against. And now, because it's going all the way across, I don't have to move the block over. But it's really nice and secure. And in this position, basically, that just became my bench hook. Same exact thing. I can saw against it, but this allows me something to cut into. And I want to use a clamp to press against, to saw, cut, even shoot, or anything like that. That's just another variation of a bench hook. And a bench hook is just a board with something on back to hook onto the edge. I like to use a little ruler on the back because I can set my dividers really quickly on it. Plus the fact it is fairly low, so if I'm planting something really thin, I can use this as my reference point. Now that's all well and good until you start getting side action. Maybe you're flattening something or you're referencing or whatever reason you're kind of getting a sideways action or you want to be able to be doing it in all different directions so the force isn't always going straight into those dog holes. In that case, I come back to this little stick right here. Notice I have this 90 degree notch already cut out of it. I'll use this in conjunction with my holdfast. Now holdfast is just, uh, well this one is from Gramercy Tools. In my personal opinion, I think this is one of the best values in the entire woodworking realm. Because I want to say for 30 or 40 bucks you get two of these. And basically this is a bent steel wire. It's not a piece of cast iron, so it's not going to crack on you. The grains are going making that curve right there. And this is ever so slightly smaller than three quarters of an inch. For example, this, these holes are three quarters of an inch. So I can actually drop this down and it will rattle around. So whenever I come down here, it is actually touching the top of the hole here and the bottom of a the hole there and it's kind of canted in that hole. So whenever I come over and if I were to hit it with a mallet, 
notice this point will go down and that kind of springs up and I got a little leather pad right there and that just that right there locks it down really really well the problem is it's still on top so if I want to plane in here I'm going to be hitting it so it just doesn't quite work to release it you can either hit the back or you can come up from underneath and knock it up forward, and that just releases that spring and you can move it around. But with something like this right here, what I can do is I can clamp it on the back side of it so it gets leverage, and notice I have it touching right here, and then in conjunction with one of these pop-ups right there, I can now clamp that down, and now I can plane this board slightly sideways. I can come the other way. It allows a lot more flexibility and you can put as many of these as you want from different angles to really lock it in. As long as it's lower than whatever you're surfacing, you can now surface the face of an entire project. Now if you don't have a hole fast, a lot of these clamps that you buy nowadays, they have removable ends. So what you can do is you can actually clamp it in, put that th down through your hole, reattach this on bottom, and now you have a clamp that you can put anything on, including using one of these triangles off to the side so that you can plane it over there. You, don't, you can make do with what you got. I find these little quick clamps really, really flexible. Now, if you need to surface a longer board, well, you can do the same exact thing. This little board I have right here is just big enough to cross over to my benches so I can actually now come in and if I have a long board I can bump up against it and I can flatten about four feet of work I can also if I have like a panel a door panel I can bump it up here here clamp that down and now I can plane an entire panel straight and I can even put pressure this way I can put it this way whatever I need to do so it doesn't take much to be able to flatten the face of anything you're working on on a workbench. I've shown you how to do it all with just a hold fast. Now let's talk about the edge a little bit more. Now I use a shop making leg vise and basically it is a maple piece of maple wood that I turn that down and put threads in it and I have a nut on the back side of the leg right there and uh, I also have a, a pin down here so as this squeezes in it leverages against this lower pin and that gives me the force over here and this will really get a lot of torque on it and I use it mainly for small stuff if I'm doing on the ingrain but a lot of the time it is so that I can plane an edge so I can come over here and work it all the time and for the size of stuff I make this is just perfect but if you don't have the capability of turning your own threads or maybe using an Acme rod or you can even use a pipe clamp to make something like this, there are other options. Now if your piece is wide enough that it's wider than your bench, you can just use any old clamp to secure it because your leg is flush and just work it that way. Use multiple clamps if you need to. But if it's not, well a leg vise is basically a board where you squeeze it right here and because there's something down below to catch it, it rotates in. So if you're doing something that's the same thickness of your board, really, I would maybe glue on the board down here, put a piece of leather or an old mouse pad or something right there, and now I have my clamp that works just like a leg vise. I can raise this up and you wouldn't believe how much force you can get on it because your pivot point is down below. This is even a little bit of hand pressure right here will put a lot of force right there to work there. So you can make a leg vise out of a simple clamp. Other things I know people do, they will once again do a three quarter inch holes into their leg and simply use a hole fast. Nice and simple. And once again, if you don't have a leg vise or you don't want to do those clamps or if you want to put something in somewhat semi-permanent, one of these quick things, drop that in, secure it on back, and now you have a vise that's here for good. Now the problem with depending on just leg vise for planning your edges is that when things get longer, it's, it's hard to plane stuff because it wants to move. you got a lot of leverage back there. Now I used to have something called a sliding dead mill. And that basically sit in two slots right here and I can move it around and it had little holes where I could rest a board on it. And if it is a thin board, what I would do is I would put 
another board just right here and rest it that board on that board. But in all honesty, that's kind of stupid because that's assuming your board has to be level with the ground in order for you to plane it. Once again, idiotic. So if this is what you're doing, just come over here, use your hold fast to clamp that thin board down once again. Now it'll rest on this side, it's clamped on that side, and you can plane it all day long. No big deal. In fact, you don't even have to have a leg vise to do that same exact thing. Now these old-timey twin screws are incredibly flexible around the bench. Not only could you use them as a leg vise by simply clamping it on the edge of your workbench, driving your strap in there, but when I'm cutting long stuff like this right here, this is a really easy way I do it. I will actually take a dowel and I'll put it on the back side, clamp that down, put it over a dog hole, open up the front of the mount, put it over a dog hole, right like that, and I, in a sense, create what they call a bird's mouth. Helps me do a lot of stuff, because now all I have to do is I can put it right in, into the face, there's my reference, and I can, I can uh, claim as long as my bench is. Pull it out, put another board in. Easy peasy. So we've covered how we can do work on the face and the edge, and I've showed you several different ways to do it, including some really inexpensive clamps. As long as you have a good solid flat edge, flat surface, it works as a base for all your clamps. Now we want to talk about the edges. And most of my work I do, small cabinets, that kind of stuff, but if you're doing something really, really big, you can still hold it on the edge on a workbench like this. First, let me show you how to do the small stuff. I use this tiny moxin. Basically, this is construction lumber. I glued two pieces in to create an L. That L can be, I use my hold down, hold fast to clamp that down. It's got two holes in it and two screws in it. You don't have to have screws. You can use those little quick clamps, just like take off that back portion and a board. And this board, these holes that this go in through are a little bit oversized so it can move side to side. And basically, this just screws in like this. Uh, the screws are made out of hard maple so that they will last you a long time. And then I can drop work in and I can get a lot of leverage on this one because I can move stuff over to the side, clamp it down run here, and then if I screw this on down, it will actually crush fibers. It's so strong. But most of the time, I just drop it in the middle to cut my dovetails or tenons or something like that. Fairly easy. No big deal. I can also take this off and use it flat on anywhere on my workbench to do long stuff, just like you did with the uh, twin screw. I'll just clamp one side down, playing all the way along. Really flexible. Now, a traditional, what they call moxin, is well over two feet wide. This is just a short one I built for the end of my bench because that's as big as I ever do anything. But if you don't want to spend money on this, then you're back to those twin screws because now I can put a very long, I can put a small board on just one edge like that and it'll work just fine. Or if I have a long panel, say I'm doing a dovetail blanket chest, I can stretch that all the way out and come up. Now, if it's a little bit taller, we have other ways of doing it. Well, I can easily put longer pieces in my leg vise. Maybe even tilt them a little bit just to work on them at a slight angle or just move them over the side because the screw only goes through halfway through this bench right here. So I can go all the way down to the floor and up to here and that's really pretty a big cabinet if I was doing that one. I will tell you this. If you're working high up off of the bench in this kind of situation, a lot of times I find it best to clamp a pretty thick piece of wood right there and it'll prevent a lot of flexing. But... In that same line, if you want, if you're working the edge, you can use any kind of clamp. Put a sacrificial board into your fence, and then just clamp to that. And there you go, you can work. If you need it to be more stable, just raise the board up. Well, there you go. Probably a dozen, dozen different ways that you can hold your work so that you can actually get stuff accomplished on the face, the side, and the edge, or whatever the wor words they do. You do not need a big fancy workbench. A solid core door with some ho holes drilled into it will accomplish most of this stuff. The key thing is I like to have legs that are flush because the legs offer me clamping opportunities. Other than that, everything I use I built in the shop. You don't have to have those big nice bench crafted or high dollar items, though I will tell you, I really, really want one of those sets. Having played around with them, 
there is a quality to them. All of them will accomplish the work, but there's a nice touch and feel to it that I appreciate. And if you're at your bench a long time and you're building something that lasts a lifetime, it might be worth it to invest in the higher dollar stuff. But you don't have to. Simple, basic stuff. Flat work surface, way to clamp it, clamp to it, and you can get stuff done. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like, favorite, subscribe to all those social medias. I have an Instagram page, Twitter account. I even have a website where I write a blog and I sell some swag such as t-shirts, hats, that kind of stuff. And if you want to throw me a tip or something like that, you can use a join function in YouTube or go to my Patreon page. But after all this and all that, I want you to remember one last thing. That it is always worth the effort to learn, create, and share with others. Y'all be safe and have fun.